My name is John Porter, um, not the Polish uh, rock star. I'm John Porter, the British mountaineer. I was born in America. I live in England now. And when I was much younger, in the 1970s, I climbed a lot in Poland and also went on expeditions uh, with Polish climbers to the Himalayas, Hindu Kush, Wojtek Kurtyka, uh, and Andrzej Zawada amongst them. In the 1970s, I was very fortunate because uh, there were many big unclimbed walls and unclimbed ridges uh, in the Himalayas. And we teamed up with Polish climbers to make the first ever east-west expedition to the Hindu Kush. I've, I've written about all adventures in a book uh, called One Day as a Tiger. And uh, it's a great pleasure that it's being published in Poland by the Annapurna Press. When we climbed Andaka, it was at the time when mountaineering was changing. Uh, in, in Poland it was changing as it was in Britain. In Britain we had Chris Bonington and his big expeditions in Poland. Andrzej Zawara still believed in the big expeditions. But a lot of the younger climbers like Alex McIntyre and Wojtek Kurtyka believed that real mountaineering was lightweight going with just a few friends. And we proved that it was possible on, on Bandaka. And the following year we organized just four of us to go and climb the south buttress of Changabang. Uh, this time, Christoph Zurich joined us, so it was Wojtek, Alex, myself and Christoph, and we climbed the south buttress, completely alpine style, slept in hammocks for three nights at above 20,000 feet. It was like climbing El Capitan after climbing the Grand Jurasse. Uh, it was uh, just a fantastic climb, and we were very lucky and had good weather. Uh, there were some very close calls. Christoph got quite ill and Wojtek was very worried, but he pulled himself through. Alex fell over 100 feet and I worried that if the weather changed, then who knows what would have happened. But we succeeded. And from there, Wojtek and Alex went on to climb together the south face of uh, Dolagiri. Uh, and also they um, did uh, two attempts on the west buttress of Makalu. And they were fast friends. He was an incredible climber, Wojtek, still a very good friend of mine. Um, the book One Day as a Tiger tells the stories of climbing with the Polish climbers, but also it's the life story of Alex and his girlfriends, his loves, his mother, his family, and the whole era, which in Britain included some other great climbers like Pete Borman and Joe Tasker. While the 70s was the era of the British that led into the 80s being the year of the great Polish climbers. And it was a tremendous pleasure and a great honor to have been a small part of that. And the book tells all those stories. And I wonder how the title of the book, One Day of the Tiger, will sound in Polish. I'll try, maybe something like this. Pierzic i Jing jak Tigris. When I met Andrew Varda in 1976, we got on tremendously well. And I found him a fascinating man, very intelligent, very aristocratic, urbane. Uh, and we understood each other. We understood we could plan, a, plan things together. And the first thing we planned was that trip across to uh, Afghanistan through the Soviet Union. But I saw another side of Andre on the train uh, that they smuggled us across the Soviet Union on. We were leaving Moscow and the Russian Red Army Choir and the Red Army Band were playing in the carriage. And uh, I could see Andre was getting agitated. And he said to Alex McIntyre, let me see this new ice climbing tool that you have. I'd like to, to see this and see what, how good it is. So Alex went into his rucksack and he took out the pterodactyl and gave it to Angie. And Angie said, mm, yes, I think this will be perfect for the job. And with that, he went and he smashed the speaker in our carriage in our compartment and then he went all the way down the carriage smashing all the other speakers until it was completely quiet and he came back and said in Poland we do not put up with this militarism. Alex McIntyre met in university and he was a very charismatic figure. Uh, he looked like the rock star Mark Boland which some of you may have heard of. Uh, he definitely looked a rock star, long hair, very beautiful, Adonis-like face. And the women loved him, of course. We were all very jealous of him. Uh, he had uh, a couple of very steady girlfriends in university. But when he went on trips, sometimes he would wander. And I remember when we went through a village uh, uh, on the way into Changabang, the first very small village, an old lady looked from the upstairs window with his two daughters 
and she waved at us and said, Chang or bang? Chang or bang? And Alex said, oh, both please. And later he caught us up about four hours after we'd got to camp. So I wondered what happened. Climbing with Wojtek Kurtika was uh, a tremendous experience. Uh, he was such a great climber and we felt uh, kind of overwhelmed really when we first went on Bandaka, Alex and I. That was our first really big Himalayan climb. And I think Wojtek was a little like a mother hen. He, was no, he knew he had to look after us. And although we'd done lots in the Alps, we didn't have his Himalayan experience. And I remember at the beginning of the fourth day, uh, it was just getting light, and I said to Wojtek, right, let's go, we've got to move. And Wojtek said, no, we're going nowhere. And I said, Wojtek, we can't afford not to go now while it's still frozen. And he said, if we go now, we will die because soon the stones will be falling. And it was true. Uh, we've never seen stone fall on any mountain like there was on Mandaka. And just at the time I would have said we should have been climbing uh, the, the route we had chosen, this enormous rockfall started and it went on for two hours. And Wojtek had been absolutely right. And after that, I kind of kept my mouth shut when I made suggestions because uh, I knew Wojtek was probably going to be right. Um, and uh, he, he kind of semi-guided us up the route. But at the very top of the route, um, that's where our Scottish ice climbing came into it. And Alex, in particular, was a great ice climber, and uh, he found the way through, uh, through to the summit, and uh, it was just a fantastic experience. When I wrote the book, I didn't expect really much of it, but it's now in seven languages, and it's a real honor to have it published in Poland, because so many of my friends are here in Poland. But it isn't just a book about climbing. I think the reason it's been successful worldwide is that it goes into some of the philosophical aspects of climbing. It talks about the families, the impacts on families, friends, and the whole generation and why we climbed. Many of the events in the book take place much nearer to World War II than we are today. In other words, back in the days of the Cold War, when I think we were much more nihilistic and romantic. And I cover all those uh, facts as well. The times were changing and we were part of a tremendous revolution that uh, still has an impact in the way everybody climbs nowadays. But the book is about life, the universe, uh, and love and death. And uh, that's why it is so accessible to so many people. Uh, in the book I talk about uh, Alex's uh, two great loves, uh, Gwyneth, but mainly his love for Sarah Richard. Uh, they were due to be married at some point, and Alex and Sarah had one of the closest relationships I've ever seen. They kind of had a spiritual as well as a physical bond. Um, on Annapurna, Alex swears that he could travel to her in his sleep, and she sometimes would sense him. And when Alex died, it nearly killed Sarah. And I talk about the way she struggled with her emotions for many years. But with the help of Maria Coffey, who was the partner of uh, another good friend of mine, Joe Tasker, who was killed in the same year with Pete Borman on Everest, uh, they fought their way through and found uh, a life of their own um, uh, without, the, without their partners. So um, it's about survivors and about people that are left behind, as well as the great feats of climbers. Uh, I first came to England in 1977. Uh, my father was English, and I had a choice of going to the Vietnam War or moving. And uh, I decided on the strength of my parents' arguments that I should go to England. And I went to Leeds University, and I found a, a very different climbing culture to the one I was used to. Um, but uh, one I immediately understood. Uh, it was very active, doing a lot of uh, hard routes, and uh, I fell in with a very strong group of climbers at Leeds University, and we were part of the, uh, the group of British climbers that helped change things. Brian Hall, uh, Alan Rouse was a good friend of mine, Roger Baxter-Jones, um, Pete Livesey, John Syrett, and of course Alex McIntyre. And I'm a survivor from that generation, as the 80s were to the Poles, the 70s were, were to the British. A lot of climbers um, tried things which uh, proved to be fatal for them. 
and uh, my book talks about that as well. And now here I am, nearly in my 70th year, and uh, I find myself an American about to become president of the famous Alpine Club of London. So I'll do my best for three years to uh, keep pace with the changes that are taking place, climbing going into the Olympics, the changes in the British Mountaineering Council, but uh, I will never um, back away from the traditions of pure climbing and love of the mountains, which shows respect and uses them as places for adventure and not just for sport.